So one of my uh, viewers asked me to um, have a look inside of this and that is actually a great idea to, so we can see what's inside this cheap inverter and I'll actually open up my good inverter as well and we can kind of compare what's inside and just see how terrible it is. But actually while I was working on another video I found a better way to illustrate the problem with this inverter. Um, I was actually testing a new meter and that's a different video that's coming out soon and that, not this meter this is a different meter I mean this is a meter you've already seen but something crazy happens with this inverter if I plug this in and I have a fan just pulling a load let's uh, zoom you in a little bit look at the wattage and that's not the meter's fault. This thing is all over the place. 140 watts, 70 watts, 90 watts. It can't decide how much wattage it's using. And um, and I and you know and I complained in a previous video that the output of it was very choppy and it made the lights flickers. And you can now visually see how weird its wattage usage is and let me let me illustrate you know let me zoom out for you let me zoom out here you know let me just illustrate Ooh. don't do that those are live connections I forgot those are live let's unplug those learn from my mistakes don't do what I do um, you know, when you're filming, you're sometimes trying to keep things going and you don't think about what's going on. Those are some messed up connections. Well, at least the camera was rolling. Um, anyways, they should be good enough to... I'll, I'll remake this cable, but should be good enough for... Um, just to illustrate... My point about the wattage usage. Uh, what is going on here? Am I using the wrong? Yeah, I was using the, I was using the the screw on terminals from the other. Doo -doo -doo. This needs a washer to, to tighten up. Okay, let's plug this back in. Okay, same load. on the good inverter look at the wattage usage look how consistent it is 112 consistent and again this up this um, this inverter has you know nice clean output and look how clean its input is so um, this visually indicates that this other inverter is just all over the place with its uh, power input and output so um, let me turn this off. Let me disconnect this cable this time. And uh, now we're going to uh, take this apart. So I'll bring you back in a second. So here is the inside. Um, it's not much. Um, you can see this is marked 24 to 110. This is a 24 volt um, inverter and with, obviously with the 110 output. Um, this probably takes the DC, converts it up to 110, but it's still DC at that point. And then you can see on the walls, they have a bunch of MOSFETs and they're probably um, using the MOSFETs to um, chop up 
the, the 110 DC into AC. Um, now I'm no, no expert, but, um, you know, that's what it appears to be. And they got these big capacitors and these capacitors may be part of why the, the input was so all over the place, probably have capacitors charging, discharging, charging, discharging, causing the, um, you know, the input to be so choppy and probably causing the output to be so choppy. So, um, you know, that is this, that's the inside here. Let me, I'm going to open up the good one and we can do a quick comparison. So here is the inside of the two inverters. This is the good one, obviously, and this is the, the cheap one. Now, um, if you actually look carefully, they're actually very similar in construction. Here is both the main transformer that takes the uh, 24 to 1. This is 24 to 120. This is 24 to 110. Um, and then they both have their MOSFETs and voltage regulators on, you know, here we have some voltage regulators and some MOSFETs on this big heat sink. This has voltage regulators and MOSFETs using the case as the heat sink, but these are almost identical in design. They're both using the same method. Um, what is different is the main capacitor. This has a 560, uh, yeah, 560, I don't know if you can see it. It is a 560 microfarad capacitor. This has a 150 microfarad capacitor. So the main capacitor is four times larger on this one, which might help explain why the output of this is more consistent than this. The capacitor is there is to, is to fill in fluctuations. It acts like a, like a battery that kicks in and, and fills get holes in the, in the uh, power output. And um, it, may, it may be as simple as the, the main capacitor in this is just not up to the task. Um, um, you know, obviously this is nicer construction with its big internal heat sink that's in line with the, the airflow from the fan. This, they just tied these onto the, the, the case, which is pretty thin. Um, but overall, the con the, uh, they're clearly using the same concept for um, um, stepping up and then chopping the voltage. Um, just better construction and larger components and you end up with a much nicer output. So, um, yeah, there's no, there's no major, um, you know, there's no major differences. It's just in the size of the components and the quality of the components that makes a good inverter.